Good morning, and welcome to our fantastic, zootastic family fest. We're so glad to have you all here today. And I'm Lauren Kleinfeld with Sunken Gardens in the city of St. Petersburg. And I'd like to welcome you on behalf of our partners today. It's been a collaborative effort working together. What a wonderful, zootastic, fantastic day we're having here. I'm very proud that after years of effort, people like George Baxter, who worked very hard to see that Lowry Park Zoo and Great Explorations could come together, has finally come to fruition. And it's very, very nice to have Marlene Spalton of the Community Foundation that George founded come all the way over the bay, along with Craig Pugh, the head of the Lowry Park Zoo, to come be with us today. Our weather committee worked very hard to see that the rain does not occur for at least four or five hours. And just a couple of things of note. Lauren Kleinfeld here, who runs many divisions of operations of the city of St. Pete, has been a wonderful partner with Great Explorations as we went through a series of issues. And now we are a, just a wonderful, reimagined, rebuilt, and wonderfully reinvigorated children's museum for the benefit of all the citizens of St. Pete and Tampa Bay. So all I can say is, is these things don't happen without a lot of cooperation, and you're seeing some of the people up here that are making this happen. Aspect, the uh, Academy of Senior Professionals at Eckerd College, I gotta remember, and Ken Wolf is here, another group that is just wonderful in helping support our organization and seeing that this kind of thing happens. You're seeing some wonderful animals around here. You have never seen this in St. Pete, Florida, ever. And it's because of the efforts of these people that we're able to bring these wonderful animals, these treats, these educational beings over to our area here. So being very short, all I can say is Great Explorations is your children's museum. Sunken Gardens is your unbelievable rainforest in the urban zone of St. Petersburg. We appreciate your support in making this all continue to grow and thrive for the benefit of the children and families of St. Petersburg. It's truly a pleasure on behalf of the Lowry Park Zoological Society that operates Lowry Park Zoo and the 350 employees, 100 volunteer educators, and some 6,000 volunteers who every year help keep the zoo strong in its service to Central Florida. This is in fact our 25th year of serving Tampa Bay. And it's that silver anniversary that has us a, a chance to reflect. And I see our friends here from Parenting Magazine. Uh, if it were 27 years, I were welcoming you. I'd talk to you about a zoo that uh, some called one of the 10 worst in the United States. But in 2004 and 2009, most recently with Parent Magazine, we were named number one family-friendly zoo in the United States and couldn't have done it without the help of so many in the community. It's really a delight to be here today with our partners in Pinellas County. Indeed, that's what makes a community strong. Partnerships and collaboration that bring us together, each with our unique strengths to help enrich the lives, the quality of life in our community, and also to make it a destination for visitors and tourists on which so much of our economy depends. Lowry Park Zoological Society is the nonprofit organization that operates the zoo. Its mission is to connect people with the living earth. And most of the work we do is indeed at the 60-acre park owned by the city of Tampa and operated by an independent group of volunteers. But our work really knows no boundaries. Indeed, we try to encourage valuing of all life, respect for all life on the planet, and indeed appreciating the variety of life on earth which scientists call biodiversity, just appreciating that awesome variety of plants and animals around the world. And we do it with an extraordinary collection of some 1,600 animals, many of which are here today with a couple dozen staff from a facility at the zoo that's called the Florida Environmental Education Center. Mercifully, it has the nickname Zoo School. And it is the first, we're the first and only zoo with daycare and preschool and kindergarten to focus on early childhood development to make sure our future generations of adults grow up respecting the, the majesty of life on our planet. And in fact, I'm joined today by both Ashley and Melinda with two representatives of our collection. What we try to do at the zoo is make the animals from faraway places more familiar so that we can learn to love them. And we try to elevate the wildlife in our own backyard here in Florida so that we don't take it for granted just because it's nearby. We have uh, with Ashley a barred owl that you can see here in Florida and other parts of North America. And also our, uh, our uh, 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 the hyacinth macaw from Central South America 
in uh, Melinda's hands. And these represent the two dimensions of our exhibitry at the zoo, making the exotic more familiar and making what's local elevated to a level we truly respect it. We also operate the only nonprofit manatee hospital anywhere, and since 1991 have treated more than 300 manatees uh, for uh, circumstances ranging from uh, cold stress and boat strike to red tide poisoning here in the Gulf. And that's what the modern zoo must do. It's not just a, an attraction, just a place to look at animals, but to maintain families of animals that represent living systems and habitats around the world and to connect what we do in the zoo to places all over the planet. And we currently represent in outdoor exhibits animals of Africa, Asia, Australia, Central South America. And certainly for all of us today, so important, wildlife of Florida. We have the most comprehensive collection of Florida's endangered species. So on behalf of the animals, the volunteers, the staff, the trustees of Laurie Park Zoological Society, thank you again to our friends at Community Foundation of Tampa Bay, our wonderful partners at Blade Great Explorations and also Sunken Gardens, and most of all to you, representing a community that really cares about keeping animals in our lives, wonderful gardens in our lives, and values education for adults and for that next generation on whom we'll all depend. Thank you for being here today. So this is Flower. She's our prehensile tailed skink. Do you guys know what prehensile means? You do? Kind of like a monkey tail. She had sort of a monkey tail here. Muscat grape wrapped in blue cheese, toasted pistachios, and prosciutto de parma. The excitement of being around all these great chefs in, in, in the Tampa Bay region, and um, and to be able to take a part in that, and 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 promote our business in, in, in the same light as all these other great establishments. When I first heard about the event, um, I was very excited uh, to be bringing this level of artists and chefs to the uh, St. Petersburg area for the very first time. And I, in uh, supporting the arts in St. Petersburg is extremely important to me. So when I was asked, I felt very honored that I was selected to be one of the visual artists uh, at the event and um, hopefully to be able to bring more emphasis on the uh, art in St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is an arts destination and it's growing. for us to showcase some of our signature dishes. Um, we are known for our pho, which is a beef uh, rice noodle soup. And we also have a little bit of French and Chinese cuisine. Yeah, I think it's a great city. It's a great venue to have something like this. 
Um, people don't know maybe how beautiful our city is, and I think you know it's a great opportunity for all the people to come from around the uh, area and maybe from all, uh, farther away and and uh, and, uh, and uh, meet you know see what we're all about. This is great. First Angel St. Pete Festival. This is so cool to me. I love how St. Pete, right? <laughs> you spend all this time making a really cold martini. Show your glass, right? You have to start with a cold glass. Otherwise, why are you doing it? I think St. Petersburg is turning into both the um, art and now food capital of the East Coast, and we think it's absolutely fantastic. Florida Fresh um, day boat black grouper that's been cured with ginger and lemongrass, smoked with local tangerine wood. It's over an organic kale salad. Have a nice little citrus ponzu topped with uh, micro wasabi. Well, I actually won an HSN contest that was partnered with this event. So it's been a wonderful weekend, and we've been here and had a private reception with HSN last night, and then. VIP status today here at the tasting. And St. Pete, shocking, not, not shockingly, but surprisingly, I'll say, if all of these restaurants in St. Pete, I'd be happy here, because as you can see by my size, <laughs> I do like to eat, so I could be very happy here in the city. If this is indicative of what the city has to offer, thumbs up from Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I think that it's really neat that we have a lot of uh, unique um, eateries and, and, and individual neat places that uh, you don't find in every city and even on the other side of the bridge in Tampa. Uh, I think that St. Pete is driven on the, uh, the culture of um, what we do, you know, arts and, and food and, and, and museums and um, exciting events like St. Pete Eats. So I think that makes us stand out as a city and in a, in a, uh, in, in downtown as its own little community.